All right, I think we're back. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mitch. Uh, I'm the co-founder of Muckrock. Uh, Muckrock is a website to help people file freedom of information requests. Uh, so, so basically the idea from this came from a collaboration between me and Mike. Uh, so I have a technology background and Mike has a journalism background. And so uh, the news industry is kind of an industry that has been disrupted by uh, technology. You know, the internet, there's a lot of bloggers and other kind of non-traditional news sources now uh, that the uh, news industry is, is dealing with. So we decided you know, it was a kind of a good area for, for some technology solutions. So we picked one in particular, which was uh, helping people to file freedom of information requests in order to obtain uh, government documents, public government documents, as a you know, primary source for news stories. So this is kind of a, a hot topic in, in news now due to things such as WikiLeaks, where you've got a lot of confidential documents being leaked. But we decided to do it more in a, a legal way, where you're getting documents directly from the government <laughs> that are, are public and meant to be viewed by the citizens. Um, so, all right. So, uh, freedom of information laws are are basically like a, a search engine into government documents. The problem is that they're not easy to use like a search engine. So Google, you go on, you type in whatever information you want, and it, it brings it back to you. If you want a, a government document, you have to figure out which agency has it. You know, you have to write a letter uh, correctly that they're going to accept as a freedom of information uh, request, and then you have to you know, follow up with them, make sure that they actually follow through and get you the documents you want, which when dealing with the government sometimes isn't so easy. So we decided to try to kind of bridge that gap to make a website where you can go on, file a request, and uh, you know, it, it's much easier. It, it'll format the letter for you properly. It'll help you figure out which agency you need to send it to um, and you know, how to send it to them correctly. And then have one place where you can have all of those uh, and uh, manage them, follow up, you know, you can see which ones are due, which ones need, you know, further correspondence, and manage it all in one place. Um, and then it, it also kind of creates a, this public repository of, of documents that anyone can browse. So a lot of times, you know, people will, will file these, these re requests and they get this public information, but they don't, you know, release it anywhere. They, they use it for whatever they're using it for, and then it's never out there. So now, uh, if we, as you know, as we go and collect more documents, there will kind of be this repository. So instead of having to always go to the government to get it, you can you just find it on our site if someone's already requested it. Um, so some of the other uh, kind of technological collaborations we have is uh, Document Cloud. I can actually show you. So what Document Cloud is is an open source, uh, basically a document viewer, for basically for documents just like we have, so we can take a look at one of these. So basically we upload it to Document Cloud's server and it gives you uh, this nice viewer. It's, uh, it OCRs it so you can, it's searchable and uh, yeah, basically gives you a, a nice embedded viewer. And if uh, someone else is requesting documents for their own news story or or blog posts, they can embed the document uh, with the nice viewer directly onto their site. Um, so I'm going to do a, a demo of what it's like to file a request. So submit a request. So first, you're going to pick which level you want to file at. So right now, we're we're focused mainly uh, in Massachusetts and some of the the cities around here. We'll just pick Cambridge. We also have uh, federal requests at the moment. Um, so then you can just, uh, basically you can either request your own document here or we have a bunch of predefined, uh, predefined templates. So just uh, do a fake one here. Uh, 
because obviously it's not something you can actually request from the government. <laughs> but uh, you know, you put a, a government agency there, and it automatically gives you a nicely formatted FOIA letter, which you can submit. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So, yeah. If anyone has any questions? All right. Thank you, Marco. So I'm just curious when you say you'll keep the documents up that have already been requested, have you thought about doing sort of brute force requests in a specific area to become a repository about? We have, so some of the, actually the, the first uh, first few requests we did were, were requests like that, where we requested to, uh, I think Somerville, Cambridge, and Boston just uh, for kind of a, a list of other FOIA requests that had been submitted and, you know, got back a bunch of FOIA requests in particular regions that they had accessible. It was kind of hard because a lot of the, the government uh, didn't always keep all of them, so they're like, but we, we did get a bunch uh, seated like that, so. I have a question. Right. Is this um, uh, like a nonprofit for, for um, I, I get papers? Because I know there are a lot of freelance journalists who would mm -hmm. have a tremendous use for this product. Um, yes, yeah, so it's it's a it's a for-profit uh, project. Okay. So uh, we're still in beta right now because we have uh, you know <coughs> private private users who uh, are signing up to use it. But uh, yeah, the idea is to uh, allow basically uh, anyone who wants to use it for for some sort of fee. We're not sure you have to either on a, a per request basis or maybe a subscription where you get a certain number of requests per month. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and so the idea is yeah to to open it up to to anyone to 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 pay and file these requests and you know store them on. That's wonderful. Right. Um. So based on your research, how big the market opportunity is? Um. Not really sure, but. <laughs> What, 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 the, how many zeros on there? <laughs> uh, I'm just curious how the um, how the formatting of it changes in the local governments. Would it be like a pain in the ass, or would it be pretty simple to kind of expand that area of the site? Um, you mean just in terms of city to city? Yeah. Of, like the formatting of the letter itself. Mm -hmm. um, I think it, it's the formatting itself is not too different. Um, I think that the main difficulty in expanding is really uh, collecting a database of the the agencies in that region. So you know, the, whatever the you know, each town has its own right you know municipal buildings, and so the idea is to kind of uh, have the, the beta user start seeding that. So you know, have when they file a request, we'll look up the address, email address, whoever we need a contact to fulfill that request, and fill it in so that when users go, you know, when they want something that you know to the police department. Uh, the address, the email address is all already there, so it can be very easy, very automated. Um, so what does someone like the New York Times, what do they use now to do it? Do they have dedicated people who happen to know how to do this, or is there a um, corporate solution already available? So I, I believe uh, most reporters just do it by hand. They'll maybe use an Excel spreadsheet or uh, kind of whatever own way they have of keeping track of them. But, you know, they'll write the letters by hand, mail them, and, and keep track of them. Uh, by themselves, I guess, you know, some uh, probably the larger media companies probably have, might have some sort of home, homegrown solution that that they use. Uh, but you know, there's that's nothing that they're they're sharing with other people or or anything. So, uh, you yeah. know. So you guys probably know better than I. I'm I'm not sure. Um which type of behavior you're expecting? People that are looking for something specific and then they want to file for something or those other guys that are just interested in certain topics and they would like to get alerts whenever whenever something interesting is, you know, someone asks for something interesting or if you did the uh, brute force, uh, an ongoing brute force thing, you know, we always get the, the new uh, and, and uh, interesting stuff that people want to register and get alerts. So I'm, I'm curious if you guys have an understanding of what type of behavior you are expecting. You know, someone that would like to register and get whatever is uh, new, or uh, someone that is looking for something specific and that, that's what you're doing. Um, so right now we're kind of starting with people who are looking for specific documents. 
uh, you know, and using it to request those documents. Uh, we have thought about though expanding in the future to kind of, like you said, like kind of have topics and just kind of, you know, have of us ourselves kind of blast out, you know, these recurring requests that on certain topics or you know certain information, and and you know have people kind of subscribe to that as a as a data feed. Do you have a sense of how the government might feel about this? Is there a reason they make documents so hard to obtain? Um, so uh, it's probably a, a multi multiple reasons. I mean, I think part of the reason is just they're not set up to make it easy. Um, for example, uh, we'll request uh, emails, you know, a, a lot of emails for, that a, an agency has received, and we'll get a printout of the emails, you know, like 500 pages, and you know, when we ask them why, why are they printed out? Why can't you just you know send them to us electronically instead of printing them? We scan them and put them back, um, and they say you know uh, they'll have a lawyer or something review it and you know redact anything that's confidential, and you know for a lawyer to go through 500 pages online is is not feasible, and you know they don't have the software to support that. So it seems like a lot of it is just they don't have the technology on their end to to make it easy, and I guess they're not really incentivized to to make it any easier. So that's kind of why. Uh, we're trying to bridge that gap. Um, there, there are also probably agencies that will probably not like uh, all the requests coming in, but uh, you know, it's the law and the citizens have a right you know, to transparent government and to seeing these documents. All right, thank you, Mokak. <laughs>